today I'm working on previously started painting and I'm using a brush to apply D-limonene, which is a stronger solvent than Gamsol or odorless mineral spirits. Another product you could use is Citrusolve, which has that same ingredient in it. You want to let the solvent set up on your surface for about a minute so it has time to work and basically dissolve some of the layers of wax and oil paint so you can get back to what is underneath. This is a way to create some pattern and interest back in your work. I like doing it for patterning. Uh, also, if I'm feeling a little bit uh, stuck and need to change things up, it's a great way of having some new marks to respond to. You can also put the solvent on with a pipette or a mister bottle, depending on the types of marks that you want to achieve in your work. I really like what happened uh, where the blue is and the orange peeked through. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't capture that on camera, but you can see how that looks there. So I'm going to finish scraping off the solvent and then I'll put it back up on the wall and start working on it uh, horizontally. So I build up many layers in my work and just keep responding to my last mark. So I'm basically adding some more dark values. I like the strong contrast between light and dark and also using neutrals in with colors. So there's lots of differences happening. Building up layers gives you lots of depth and things to reveal from underneath. So if you like making marks, back into your work, it's really a great medium to do that because it stays pliable enough to be able to scratch back through the surface. I am trying to keep the colors balanced as I keep adding them. Um, just as if I was working on a composition. I'm not going to put the same shapes everywhere, but I want that color moving your eye around. And again, some of this might be covered up as I go, but little bits of it might peek out. So I'm using a um, palette of Quin Magenta and Burnt Umber is my brown. I am using um, I think it was cadmium yellow and some yellow oxide. My blues are thalo and cerulean blue, so both blues on the warmer side. So here you see me adding some lines in, and that's another great way to move the viewer's eye around. And there's several compatible things that you can use to add line work. Uh, Stabilo pencils, uh, graphite, marabou crayons, china markers. Here I'm using a brayer to soften this area and add more white. Now when you use a brayer your surface needs to be hard and dry otherwise you're just gonna mush your paints together and over blend and that is how you're gonna get mud. So just be cautious about uh, using a brayer after you have a lot of layers built up unless they're dry. So I'm using a stencil here to push some paint through and get a little bit of pattern. So pattern is one of the elements of design that can bring some interest to your work. And I've used the stencil as a 
print as well as a stencil, so I'm getting the, the opposite. Doing non-objective abstracts is really about responding to the last mark you made and it's just that call and response that you have to work from a place of intuition and trust. Not really uh, having any reference, so it could be an emotion, a feeling that you're trying to convey. I find it a much more challenging way to work than if I, I have more direction. So I'm just again softening here with the brayer and I'm using titanium white, bringing some white down into that corner. And I'm sorry I'm standing in front of it as I'm working. This is quite a large uh, panel, 30 by 40 inches. So it's a nice size to work on. One thing you want to make sure when you're doing stuff like this is to watch your corners that you don't end up with four corners or even two corners the same. So I'm covering the brown here. I found that it was a, a little bit too much and that I didn't like the rhythm it was creating. So just adding some more yellow in that area. Now yellow isn't a big go-to color for me, but I've been trying to use it more in my work. And it is an important color in your toolbox because it's a mixing color. And I love making green gold or limey green with the right yellow and blue. So I'm just continuing to build up more layers of color uh, using this yellow to cover up some of the green, a little bit of the brown. And this may not be in the final painting, but this is the process of building up layers as you go and responding to them. So it gives your piece a lot of history and depth and I really enjoy this process. It's a very different way of working, uh, especially abstractly when you don't have a photo reference or any idea of where the painting is going. So you really need to uh, Follow your intuition.